Tape Deck Media. Hello and welcome to the Panel Picks Podcast. I'm your co-host, Dan Bublitz Jr. And with me is my my co-host, Jeremy Plum. How how's it going, Jeremy? Hey, pretty good. Uh with me is my expert Billy, uh, the Orange Tabby. Uh, Orange Tabby, the best, the uh, best comic book bud. He is. Yeah. I got a little kiss for that. So yes, I he agrees. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm excited. This is our, Hey, I'm excited. This is our first episode that we're recording and first one where you get your voice back. Yeah. So, right. We tried to do a trailer and yeah. it did not go so well because I didn't have a voice. And, yeah. uh, and if, uh, I sound like I still don't quite have my voice, I don't, but it's a lot, it's, it's, it's a lot better. Jeremy. It's can... a lot better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we started that trailer going like, I can do 30 seconds. And then you said two words and it was just gone. And I was like, yeah, I know. I was like, nope, I can't. I'm going to direct from behind yep. the scenes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but that's okay. We'll we'll reshoot that. We'll redo that that trailer so we can both be in it. Now that I can, now that I can talk a little bit. But we're excited. So I'm excited. I've been looking forward to this for weeks. Yeah, same. So I've been work. So full disclosure, this is a podcast that I've been developing behind the scenes on my own for quite a while. Yeah, uh, this is something I've been wanting to do for well over a year. I've talked to different people about it. Still trying to, I was still trying to like, you know, get it to where I thought it want, where I wanted it, find the right person to collab with. We're there. That's yeah. Jeremy. We found it. We yes. got the right collab. Yes. Uh, it went through a name change and some formatting changes, whatever. But yeah. to give everybody a heads up, this is, like I said, this is our first episode. And basically what we're going to do is we want to be your best buds the comic book shop. Yeah. We want to help you find great comic books each week on new comic book day and yeah. maybe some throwbacks. So what we're going to be doing in this podcast is we're going to be talking about what's coming out the fall this week on new comic book day. We're going to talk about what we're reading, some of our, our favorites, what we're looking forward to, and then other pop yeah. culture types of things. So yeah. if you're really into comic books, really into nerdy things, you're going to enjoy this podcast. But Dan and Jeremy, what if I don't know comic books? I really want to, but I'm I don't know where to start. This is a great place to start. We yes. don't, we love we're not gonna we're not gonna crap talk anything. We're not gonna be like the mean guys that like judge you on your picks. No. Nope. Like, no, we want we we want you to tell us what you're reading. We want you to be excited and we'll pick some stuff that's great for newbies or explain why we like it. And it's a good starting off point. Yep. You're we're going to be like under an hour so you can put us in your ear, drive or take a train to your comic book store and you'll be ready. You'll be a pro before you walk in the door. That's right. You'll, yeah. you'll be ready to go. And this is one thing I love about comic books. I, I and I, but, but before we get into this week's episode, really like what's coming out and all that, we should kind of explain our passion for yeah. comics and kind of how we got into it. You know, first of all, I've always been a nerd. I'm, 45 years old. I've been nerdy my whole entire life. I've, you know, um, I think my first comic book that I, I probably bought with my own money was a Ren and Stimpy comic book. Oh, um, but I've kind of always been, you know, into comics here and there. I've come in phases. I owned a comic book store. That's what really got me back into comics, got out, got back in. Uh, but one of the things I love about comic books is that there's something for everybody. Yeah. It doesn't matter what your your background is, what your demographics are. There are comics for everybody that are tailored for every audience. And that's what I love. Yeah. You you can think about, especially now with all these comic book movies, there's been a real big resurgence of comic books. And you think of a your favorite thing, your favorite TV show, there's a good chance there's a comic book. For yeah. that, not that it your TV show is based on the comic book, but now where you're seeing that opposite effect, where it used to be TV movies were based on comics, now they're writing comics based on TV and movies because it's such a popular uh, uh, platform for media. Yeah. I almost picked up The Expanse 
and got into the show Expanse because that's a comic right now. And I was like, oh, I'll probably check that out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm Jeremy. I've been I'm 29, almost 30 years old, and I've been a comic book kid since I was like a little little. Uh, my mom, like some of the first toys I got is a a Superman toy from Burger King where you press a little square and his arms go up and he flies. Um, and my mom did not want us to watch Power Rangers. And so as a compromise, we got to see Batman the Animated Series and Superman the Animated Series when that was an hour-long block, which changed my life forever. I'm a huge <laughs> That's a good change. Good change. Good change. <clears throat> Love me. I, I was a big fan of Super Friends. When I was a kid, I never got to see that. And there's a couple uh, at the game room. There's a couple of DVDs of the early Super Friends on mm -hmm. uh, like the entire run. So I might pick that up. Uh, that's kind of been like a maybe. Um, yeah. But like free comic book day, I go every year to my favorite comic book store, which I might even record there a few episodes is Legend Comics. I've been going there for 15 years in and out. You know, sometimes I had money as a kid. Sometimes I didn't. Um, first comic I ever bought, if I can, if I'm remembering correctly i think my twin got amazing spider-man ultimate spider-man 27 whoa spoiler alert spoiler alert. spoiler well jeremy's a twin <laughs> yes i'm a twin uh they picked up amazing spider-man 27 i picked up superman confidential number nine and i didn't like it as a kid because i saw superman and a mermaid and i thought it'd be cool and it really wasn't because it's the middle of an arc and now i do a lot of research before i get into my comics um but I was also the academic side of comics. I loved it. I studied comics in college. I wrote research papers on comic strips. Wow, in the I wish that would have been a thing for for me. It was fantastic. But... Um, like I would read the Marvel encyclopedia, the DC encyclopedia back to back, uh, all the time. Jade had the Marvel one, and I would like watch comic documentaries. And this is this is my thing. I love it to death. Like it's not a thing I try and do and make money off of. I. I even wrote comics in college for a school newspaper. Oh, uh, fun. I got, I got fired for spelling errors. <laughs> 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 but uh, I, I absolutely love this thing. And uh, this is, I love talking about it. And I love getting new people into comics because, yeah, it's for everybody. And there's so many cool comics that talk about just everything. And it's, it, it's, it's fantastic. And I can't wait oh, for absolutely. new comics to, new readers to find their favorite comic. And I can't wait yeah. to hear about it. Yeah, and that's going to be great. That's what's going to be great about this. It's going to be yeah. everybody's guide to what's coming out, or, you know, what we're reading, what we're looking forward to, all those great things. And that's one of the things I love. So if, if you're listening to this, you probably, maybe you just discovered it. Maybe you know Jeremy. Maybe you know I. If you know either of us, you know we do stand-up. One yeah. of my favorite things about doing stand-up and touring is that I get to, because I get to travel, I get yep. to visit so many different comic book shops. Like that's when I'm on the road and I go to a new town, the first thing that I'm looking up is, are there any comic book shops yeah. wherever I'm going? And then I'm going to those comic book shops. I was just in uh, Sioux Falls last week uh, for comedy stuff. Well, by the time this comes out, it was a couple weeks ago. But one of my favorite comic book shops is Rainbow Cards and Collectibles. Ooh, uh, I've not been there. That sounds cool. Oh, yeah. It's a great store in Sioux Falls. There's one in Lincoln, too. They have a second location now in Lincoln. So, yeah, you're you're pretty close to Lincoln. Next time you're in Lincoln, you I should probably get hey, Well, I might be going there tonight for uh, Zoot and Nanny. Oh, nice. Yeah. <clears throat> awesome. I'm going to be doing Zoot and Nanny in May. Um, oh. But anyway, that's comedy stuff. And we yeah. can do plugs later uh but i just yeah so i was at and what's cool about rainbow is it's a shop that i would go to as a kid like i didn't grow up in sioux falls but when my friends who i have my friend ryan doyle and his dad uh, they were very nerdy people and i would go to sioux falls with them all the time and they would always go to rainbow and so that's where i kind of started collecting stuff yeah you know not just comic books but sports cards and all the different things so i've been going to this shop since i was a little kid uh, and they're still in business which is fantastic that's awesome yeah right yeah uh, but that's one of my favorite things about comedy is going to all these different comic book shops so uh, I, I like going when i travel i will guess find a local comic shop but what i'll try and do is find like a local zine or a local store uh, book from there um, like when I was in Boston, I wasn't for comedy. I was there for a work conference. I went to, uh, a local shop in Boston where the tick was created 
and I Ooh. picked I picked up the, the complete Edmund of the tick. And then I went to like oh. Louisville and I found some local zines and some local comic book shops or even just some local bookshops. Yep. Um, and I'm going to Kansas City later in February, and I'm gonna I'm going to find local comic book shops and see if I can find local books there in KC. Because I've been to KC a few times and I've never been to other comic book shops yet. I've even oh, you definitely. I mean, yeah, yeah. I always say if you're gonna be traveling, you got to go do those things. That's yeah. always first and foremost for yep. me. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I. It's funny because, like I said, I love going to different comic book shops. Um, when I travel and, you know, I, and I try to support, I don't always find what stuff, you know, it's like, uh, cause I also have my local comic book shop there. who has my polls, you know, like, yep. you know, and I don't, when it comes to comic books, I don't necessarily consider myself a collector where I'm not going out looking for expensive issues or key yeah. issues and things like that. If I get a good buy on something, I will go, you know, buy some back issues, but for the most part, I collect what I'm currently reading, mm -hmm. you know, like, and, and now though, I've been, I'm so far behind on reading. I feel yeah. like I'm more of a collector, but yeah, but that brings us to a good, like a transition for, before we get into what's coming out this week, what, what, what'd you read this week? Did you read anything good? I read a whole bunch of stuff. I I've read been a reading couple all of, weekend. So I'm also, I, I'm sometimes a single issue person. I am also an omnibus big collection thing. Uh, like if I can read yep. a whole series in a sitting, I will. I've um, almost thought about uh, selling my individual issues and then omnibuses. using that money to go buy either the trades or the obvious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what that means, by the way, what omnibuses and trades mean is we have, think of it like a TV show. I, I heard it and I was on a TikTok. They described comics as a TV uh, show. And I was like, I wish I could figure out, remember your name because that is the correct way to view it. Single issues are episodes. Trades is the as a few episodes. Uh, usually, it's like volume. Five. It's like a DVD volume. A season, one. yeah, yeah. It's like you know, a season. season. Yeah. Whereas an omnibus is a DVD box set of multiple yep, it's seasons. It's the complete set. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes a whole series. Sometimes not, depending on how long the series is. Yeah. Sometimes like, there's think, multiple volumes of those too. <laughs> yeah. And if they say, what's a compendium? It's the same as an omnibus. It's Some will say there's a difference. There isn't. Um, Invincible Compendium Volume 1 is just an omnibus of like the first <laughs> 50 of them, I think. But you're fine. Um, so I uh, I love that. And I also am a digital. So I'm, I'm half digital, half physical. Um, Ooh, I, I don't love, know if we can be so, friends anymore. So digital, no, okay. No, side note. You're, you're half and half. I'll accept that. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll get uh, side note before like this is probably gonna be your longest episode. Side note, um, I got out of comics for a couple of years. You know, I just was out and I, I couldn't find a, a good turning point back in. It was digital IDW uh, on Comicsology about the stuff that's free, specifically Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, nice! Reading the first five volumes of Sonic the Hedgehog for free with my Amazon Prime membership. I was like, oh, I, I love this. And I was, I kept, I was like, okay, let's look up. Uh, and this is back when comicology was kind of good because mm -hmm. they would, I could look up, oh, here's a bunch of uh, publishers and here are story runs. Now it's just on my Kindle and it's none of that's all that's gone. Yeah. Uh, now I, I give you crap about being digital and anybody listening, if you, yeah. if you read comic books digitally, I'm just, just being, just, just being a fool read comics wherever you read want. it, read that's, it. However. Yeah. yeah read it. However, I don't follower, care. On personally threads. it's just my own personal preference yeah i'm not a big digital comics person i don't like reading anything on a computer or tablet phone whatever and the only reason that is is because i spend a lot of my time on a computer for work comedy all the things Fair. that i just want to hold it in my hands i want to feel the pages i want to smell the comic book paper it is different and and it, it, it's a different experience yeah. for me and it's also a way to check out from all the technology like it's yeah. a disconnect for me so 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 what i do is one thing i do love is every day i go to humblebundle.com and i look up what they have for comics because i just bought the entire all 12 volumes plus hellboy in hell for 18 bucks wow that's and pretty I, good Downloads on PDF. I then turn off the Wi-Fi connection to my tablet, and I sit and read all day. Um, so the first thing I've read is I finished Volume Twelve this week of Hellboy, and I'm Ooh. halfway through Hellboy in Hell. 
and volume one. Uh, and I also read this week a bunch of like the BP, uh, Hellboy and BPRD one shots mm -hmm. uh, and Hellboy Weird Tales all this week. Um, and I love it. It was one of those books that was always daunting to me as a kid because I thought I'd be in the right mood in the right frame of reference to read it. No, I just leaned into it. It's beautiful. It's scary. It's sardonic. It's and there's nothing I can say about Hellboy that hasn't been said all like for decades. Um, yeah. It's it's great. <laughs> Um, Hellboy and Hell specifically because the last four volumes was not drawn by Mike Minoya. Um, so seeing his art again and especially how he does paneling, which is very interesting. There'll be like always like a couple of panels a page, which is not specifically tied to the story, but it adds like a, here's a statue of what's in the room to add ambiance and to add flair um, to it. And it, he also sometimes does like that perfect spiral, spiral in his paneling. It's really good and it really kind of sets you in the mood and I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, on the reverse end of that spectrum <laughs> was Unbeatable Squirrel Girl <laughs> by Ryan North. I almost, so I was at a convention and there was a guy that had a bunch of comic books and he was yeah. from this nonprofit board game group. And oh, so wow. he didn't really care about comics so much. He just, somebody donated their collection. And so he brought them to this convention. He was only selling them for a dollar a piece. And they had a whole bunch of the single issues of squirrel girl. And I thought about buying them, but I had already spent like 30 bucks on a bunch of other things. <laughs> oh, so let me quickly sell you on this one. I loved this edition because this is the first four volumes for 12 bucks. And it's that slightly smaller omnibus where there is just a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. There a lot of companies are moving to that. Like I uh image for Invincible, they're re-releasing all of them and they're calling the manga size. DC's doing it as well with like Far Sector and Watchmen, uh, and All-Star Superman coming out this year. I love these. These feel great. But the entire run is not this size, and that bugs me. Uh, <laughs> um, the art is fantastic and vibrant and uh just like it looks kind of fun. It, it it's looks so good. Fun. It's also Ryan North. I, so I've been reading Ryan North's Fantastic Four run. Ryan North is a hyper nerd. This is the guy that's done Dinosaur Comics for the last 15 years. The same four panels with different writing. He's the one that re uh, that did a comic adaptation of Slaughterhouse-Five. Uh, his Fantastic Four is like early Star Trek. Very sciencey science fiction. Uh, there's a whole issue about like what if a microorganism from not our uh, dimension mm -hmm. had no predators, came into here, and what how that would destroy the Earth. This is about computer science. And I learned how to count on my hand to 31 using binary code. And this talks about uh, if and <laughs> statements in code. It's amazing. Um, there are weird <laughs> deep cuts in here. Like there's a whole mole, mole man's not a deep cut, but a whole mole man dating arc here. Um and then also on almost every page, Ryan North has a little comment on the bottom of the page where it's him making a little joke or an observation under each page. Um, and so it feels a lot denser than it is. It's fantastic. It is really good. I don't laugh a lot in humor comics. Like I just, mm -hmm. I don't laugh a lot. Uh, I, I, I don't laugh. I mean, I don't know how it is for you, but even when I watch comedy, I don't laugh. I mean, internally i'll think something's funny but i don't like actively i'm i'm a big laugher when it comes to stand-up like or sketch like i'm a big laugher and i'll pause like i've been watching ted uh and i found myself laughing i did find myself laughing at ted uh man yeah, that, i didn't think i'd enjoy that show <laughs> i gotta be honest with you that series is way better than it deserves to be it, that's how it, i felt it about really it really is <laughs> There's some content warning on words they use that maybe aren't great, but like yeah, 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 it's definitely holy crap. Is that show not bad? I'm yeah, like it's pretty through. funny. Um, Let me ask this, you this real quick because you said yeah. you kind of got out of comics and then you got back into yeah. it, and 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 the digital comics is kind of what brought you back in. Because for me, I got out of comics for a while too. So I had my yeah. comic book shop. I was really big into comics. Then I started doing stand up. I sold all my collectibles to move yeah. to California. Moved out of California. Was out of comics for a while. And then I started going into this comic book shop in Ocean Beach, and uh, Criminal was the book that got me back. Oh! And so my question to you is, because if anybody listening, if you're a hardcore comic book fan, you know what Criminal is. You know that it's a series Ed. by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Yep. You know 
they're a very they're a powerhouse creative team. Yes, they are. For me, what was really cool about coming back into comics and discovering them, it, it was also kind of overwhelming, is that they have such a big catalog. So it was like, even though they've been around forever, it was like, oh man, there's all this stuff. Now I can go find that they have out there. Yeah. Plus they're putting out this new stuff. So it was really cool because you can really like dive in. Yeah. Uh, huge categories. Like, I think that's what uh, one of the things that stopped me at a certain point. Like, I still keep a lot of my comics. I have a lot of them. Um, was just, I was always, I didn't have a lot of money as a kid. And, you know, and after college, I was, I was poor a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, after college, I just never knew what the right comic to pick. I loved comics so much. I never knew the right one to pick, or am I going to be missing some of the context of a lot of things? Cause crossover events are great and they also suck. Um, yeah, well, and that's why I don't, I'm not a big mainstream comic guy. And I saw that when I had my comic book shop, that was one of the things I noticed. And I know it's marketing, but they would do these big events and they would be like, you know, it would be a crossover in all mm -hmm. the books and to fully like, you could read the, the, the story or whatever, but to get the full story, you need to like Wait. have all those crossovers and yeah. And I just, I didn't like that. I'm scared. I skipped night terror and I'm probably going to skip beast war. Beast mm -hmm. world. I'm going to skip them. Um, and I don't need to read them. And now that I just, I've went backwards and went, I'm just going to read the books I like. And like, I've been reading a lot of Superman. And I think that's part of it is like, I've known Superman my whole life. I can, I went back to 2016 and just kind of read forward. And it's going to be controversial, but I don't like Superman. I love Superman. I love hope. <laughs> it's great. And Although I tell you who I do, who I do, I do like, and I just read the new book today is um, General Zod. And I just read, I stole I just read that. Neil before Zod today. Number I one. I might pick that up. I've been reading fire and ice. <laughs> it was, it was pretty good. Yeah. Wow. Um, by the way, I don't laugh at books. I laughed out loud on this. <laughs> this is good good this is good go pick up squirrel girl go pick uh, up squirrel girl and then also side note just a one it's a one shot if you're not someone that reads a lot this is an entire book done in once by scout publishing total party killer scout is a great i feel like yeah they're a really good indie company they put yeah. up, put out some really good stuff really you know. great i read i also read and if you if you're you don't even have to be a, a gi joe person but the new cobra commander that was put out by image was so yeah. good. I I heard so many good things about that run, and it had such uh such a great twist. Like I don't know if I, I guess it, it's kind of a twist, but also a surprise. Like you don't see it yeah. coming. Like and yeah, I don't want to give any spoils or spoilers away. If you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, did not see it coming, but if if you you know, and I think it just came out last week, so it's a fairly new book. So you can yeah. probably still pick it up. Another book that I really enjoyed. I don't know if you, I'm uh, when Just it comes to Cobra westerns. Commanders. I love. Yeah. <laughs> I love me some. Did what did you just say? I just bought Cobra Commander. <laughs> oh, you just bought it. Okay, like, I right thought now. you said something else. No, I thought you dropped an f bomb. I was like, hey, let's keep this show family no. friendly. <laughs> no, I've not sworn. It's I thought hard. you said beep Cobra Commander, and I was like, whoa, that was that was a oh. harsh take, buddy. No. <laughs> No, I'll buy just it bought right it. Now. Good. I love yeah. it. Uh, another book, uh, the the number six just came out. It was the conclusion to the book, but the Enfield Gang Massacre was such a fun book. It's a western. I saw that. Uh, it's yeah. six issues. My one of my favorite parts about it is that the paper that it's on, it it looks and feels like the old time comic book paper yeah it felt like it's cool. not I like looked through yeah, it. yeah yeah it's not like glossy or you know thick like some of the new comic book uh comic books are it it reminds me of the old old school comics uh yeah. and jacob phillips does a lot of the art in that he's sean phillips son so it's cool oh, nice. that his you know another generation of artists uh in the comic book world so <clears throat> I, I saw number six and I was like, I never saw, I never picked it up from my red rack and I flipped through it and I saw a, basically a newspaper spread in the yes. midst of it. Yep. Um, it looks 
gorgeous, and I can't wait for the trade. I uh, I think I'm going to wait for the trade to come out that collects all six, and I'll just pick it up then. But definitely do that. Yeah. Another book he was involved in that's very uh, kind of westernery, but in a modern way, was uh, That Texas Blood, which I really enjoyed. Yeah. That too. Yeah. Really good book. But, well... I think yeah, we're 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 killing it on this, but we should start talking about. We should start we talk talking about, about the new stuff. Yeah, yeah, we should start yeah. talking about what's coming out this week because that's kind of what you know, the point of this podcast is to talk about what's coming out tomorrow for New Comic Book Day. Because and there's a lot of books coming out. Tomorrow. There is a lot of books. There's a always a lot of books coming yeah. out. Do like, you want to start with just so many? You want to start you, with Marvel? Let's go for it. Start with Marvel. Uh, I have a I have a lot. First of all, if you see this, I'm going to just say a quick term for people who don't know comics. Uh, facsimile edition. What that is, is an old comic that was kind of important. Getting reprinted, sometimes with a, vol a foil cover variant. It is. It has the old ads. If you see it, you don't have to pick it up. It is basically just... I, in my opinion, it's to stop collectors from uh, upselling old editions to be absurd pricing. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that like, makes sense. This week, if you're an old comic book head, it is Amazing Spider-Man 252, which is uh, the cover of Spider-Man in his black suit uh, doing an, the Amazing Fantasy 15 uh, post uh, cover. So that's that's a cool one if you're into it. Um, and I think there will be a foil variant of that as well. So good pick. Yeah. Uh, Another one coming out this week, if, if, and especially if, you, if you're new to comics and you don't know where to start. I always recommend if you go to a comic book shop, look for a number one. Yeah. Because that uh, way it doesn't seem so overwhelming because you'll go to a comic book store. You'll see, you know, uh, Fantastic Four and it'll be like Fantastic Four 6,000 or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah. no, that's a lot. But yeah. Always look for, you know, they're usually putting out new new books. Um even the, and a lot of times they're mini series, so they're mm -hmm. easy to collect. A good example of that is Dead X Men. Dead Number X -Men. one's coming out this week. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I will, I just want to real quick put a, a little disclosure here. We're talking about comics that are coming out tomorrow. They're supposed to come out tomorrow. They may not. That's one thing you'll find with comic books. Just because the publishers have a release date, that doesn't always happen to be the case. Yep. Not so much with your major publishers like Marvel, DC, Image, but a lot of your indie... Depends on who's writing it. <laughs> yep. It really does. But a lot of yeah. your indie companies might say a book's coming out and then yeah. it gets delayed and doesn't come out for another month. So yeah. keep that or, in or mind. <laughs> comics take a break. I just found out because like, hey, I didn't see Sonic the Hedgehog 69. Mm -hmm. but that's a weird sentence to say out of context, by the way. <laughs> um, especially with Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, but... Like, I didn't see that book. Like, where is it? So I looked it up, and they go like, hey, that's taking a break for four months so that Sonic the Hedgehog, Fang the Hunter, can not compete with it. So I'm just mm -hmm. like, that's it. And you, sometimes that's going to be there. Um, but yeah, the number one, we have Dead X-Men and Marvel Voices Legends, which yeah. uh, I, I might be picking up. That looks kind of fun. There's some characters in there that I don't get to see often. What's... What 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 is Marvel Legends number one? What 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 are they? Like what do they? Who do they have in it? Or yeah, like yeah, like talk about the book a little bit. Why oh, why yeah. why should people be excited? We need so, you know we need to Marvel tell people Voices why they is, should. Be. Marvel Voices is cool. I like DC also has it too. Where what's amazing about comics is that everybody gets to speak, and there is uh, characters from across like the spectrum of representation and mm -hmm. i think these books uh like legends and uh dc's is called voices correct yeah dc's is voices no marvels um, is marvels voices, marvels is voices legends um dc is power dc power. dc is power yes i get the two mixed up sometimes but uh really good stuff uh and it's just like this one we have misty knight gets their 50th anniversary like it's the 50th anniversary of them getting published so they get a, a spotlight um Sam Wilson's Captain America has its, uh, their own story. And then I forget his name a lot. It's like, I, I, I'm Googling it quickly to make sure I get the name. Cause this is a character I loved as a kid and I wanted to see more of. Uh, <laughs> and that was, uh, Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. Elijah Bradley. Um, uh, and I'm really excited for that. Uh, Patriot. I'm really excited. I liked a lot of Patriot stories. I've, I've read some stuff, mostly in crossovers. I like their stuff and I'm really excited. 
Uh, and I think it'd be a good like single issue. A lot of these stories will be kind of self-contained. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm excited for that. And that'll be a fun one. I think it's a good one for people to pick up. Like, I don't know any of these characters. Here's a great sampler of a lot of cool characters. And that that's a good point. It's a good, yeah. you know, like the samplers and stuff. <clears throat> that's also why I always like, I personally love um, like mini series and one shots as well. Yeah. Because for me, like getting a mini series is great because then I can put it in my pull box, you know, get yeah. the whole series and then I can rotate it out for something else. Exactly. So if, you're, if you have a budget, this is a good way. It's a budget friendly way to do it is to, to read these mini series. Yeah. Some of these, uh, you know, books like that. There are some good mini series that are ending, uh, and I have like low number counts. Uh, like for example, uh, Spine Tingling Spider Man number four is the last one, mm -hmm. uh, and that was written by uh, and I, I apologize if I get the name incorrectly, uh, uh, Saladin Amid. He has amazing Spider Man work, like, Spider Man has lately been hit or miss on some of the racks. Um, but he has written some amazing Miles Morales books and like Miles Morales, Spider-Man is always a safe bet. That has been consistently good for years. And he is the reason why, or one of the reasons why. Uh, so um, it's four issues of spine tingling Spider-Man, which has Peter, Peter Parker in the role. And I think, uh, Vulture four issues. You can go and get the back issues. Yeah. Pretty easy. Pretty, pretty easy. Pretty yeah uh and again it's more horror themed so if you're into that i think that'd be kind of fun uh so good one we also then have spider boy number three by dan slot which is a monster spider-man book like spider boy is apparently more of a monster i'm interested in that i'm waiting for the first trade uh dan slot has been writing spider-man for hundreds of issues and has had some groundbreaking runs like superior spider-man mm -hmm. uh so Honestly, I think it's fun. If you're not, if you don't know a lot of Spider-Man lore, that's great. Spider-Boy is super new. Spider-Boy was created in a, in a in a crossover event a little while back. And he says three issues. Go read it. It'll be fun. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. Easy to catch up on. Easy to catch. Easy to, <clears throat> catch. Easy to catch up on. Yeah. You know, I think we should switch over to DC now. Yeah. Oh, there. I have, unfortunately have a lot of that are in my pick of DC because <laughs> I love <laughs> DC a lot. Uh, DC Power 2024 has yep. uh is my number one pick because it has a it continues the far sector uh storyline far sector if you're new to comic books and especially if you're new to uh like green lantern this is a great place to start because it stars a green lantern who uh has no connection to any other uh green lanterns or to oa the, she was picked as a secret uh secret uh agent in the farthest sector of the DC universe that has literally no other stories written about it. And it's this great like political analogy story with noir and it's, and a little bit of cyberpunk. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. I can't recommend enough. One of my favorite books and this has an epilogue to it. So I get more of it. It's great. I love it so much. It's my, it's, it's my favorite. I'm excited for that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. There's a couple number ones coming out on DC. There too. are. Power Girl un Undiscovered. That looks and, cool. Or Uncovered, not Undiscovered. Un uncovered. And then yeah. Trinity Special. I'm really excited for that one because like Wonder Woman has had a lot of like daughters. Um, but this one written by Tom Taylor. I want to make sure because I always get Tom Taylor and Tom King mixed up. <laughs> uh, this one's yeah. Tom King. Tom King. Yep, it's Tom King. I get those two mixed up for some reason. I'm excited for that one. I think that's going to be really fun. I'll be picking that up. Uh, and there's a couple of annuals. Annuals, what that means is um, it's a larger book than normal. It comes once a year. Sometimes it's the main writer uh, or an author or artist of the series. Sometimes it's not. It's just a fun kind of jumping in point or just a fun big issue while the main series takes a break. Um, Batman Superman World's Finest has uh, a double side, uh, 48 pages annual with some of it by Mark Wade, some of it not. I'm excited. I've been loving the Batman Superman uh, books. So I've been reading that since its get go. Uh, also, Batman and Robin 2024 annual. I have not read any Batman in years, so I might pick that up. You might pick that up. Nice. Maybe. Uh, I'm not, I don't pick up a lot of that annuals, but again, I don't, I don't read a lot of the, 
uh, mainstream too. stuff. I'm very Fair. selective on my mainstream stuff. Uh, when I see something good, like I did pick up, I haven't, I don't think I got, I haven't read it yet, but I did pick up uh, the Zatanna Night Terror stuff. Oh yeah. Books, I wanted to pick up that. Fun. Yeah. Cause it also has a <clears throat> uh, uh, robot man and I love doom patrol. Yeah. A lot, and I'm so a big character based when it comes yep. to like Marvel DC. If I like a character, I might pick some of the stuff up. I'm sometimes writer based. Like here's the thing. I don't like, x-men i've tried i've tried so hard i i've read uh man man hates uh god loves god loves man hates uh and i have some of the claremont stuff <laughs> and i i want to and i love marauders i love marauders i love kitty pride but i'm gonna get into x-men this year because gail simone is writing the free comic book day x-men mm. book and i love gail simone a ton it's that i'll follow her work till the end of time she can write anything and I'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There's quite a bit uh, of independent stuff coming out this week too. A lot of independent stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see here. We have Duke number two. Uh, that whole Transformers G.I. Joe's uh, um, universe written by. Um, um, oh, no, man. I'm really bad with names today. Uh, the. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, that whole shared universe is really cool, really fun. I've heard a lot of positive word of mouth of it. And if you're not into that stuff, I think it'd be a great starting off point because Transformers is also like on an early number. All of the G.I. Joe stuff's on an early well, number. Well, what I find interesting too is that suddenly a lot of this stuff is coming from Image. And yeah. it was IDW. Before. It was IDW for years. For years. Yeah. So it's interesting that this uh, we have this change. It is. I'm sure. I'm curious because Hasbro has been playing, playing fun now with, with, with their publishers. Like mm -hmm. we're getting ROM the space Knight reprintings. <laughs> um, but cause Hasbro was like, gave that license to IDW and locked it down. So all of the old like 80s stuff couldn't get released. It's released now and it looks great. And we're getting Micronauts again. Uh, that's getting republished. Uh, so yeah, Hasbro's making some weird. Oh yeah, if you're if you were a big kid in the '80s and <laughs> you love toys from the '80s, great. There's you're you're gonna love this because there's lots of comic books based on those toys. Yeah, uh, or should I say toys based on those cartoons? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or cartoons based um, on the whatever whatever it was. Yeah. But there's a lot lot out there. Yeah. Oh, by the way, if you were a big uh, Star Wars fan, coming out this week, the Epic Collection, which is a big omnibus of being released by Marvel of all of the old dark horse books from Ooh. the prequels. So I might, I might pick that up because dark horse wrote some really good star Wars comics back in the day. That sounds a pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and indie stuff. Uh, the one I'm most excited for is moon man. I was just going to bring that up. I, I think that's what I'm most excited about this week. Uh, yeah. All together. Uh, yeah. It looks like it's going to be a fun comic. It's uh they don't, I mean, there's not a lot, uh, I mean, if you know, if you know the musician, uh, we'll see his name, Scott, is it Muscudi, Muscati? Yeah. I don't know how uh, to say that. Uh, Kid Cuddy, yeah. But Kid, Kid Cuddy, Cuddy there you go. A book with Kyle Higgins. Yep. Um. So, and that's a number one. So It is I'm a number one, up. yep. And it's probably, yeah, more likely, it's probably a mini series as well. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I, here's the thing. Image doesn't miss for me. I have not read an image book, with the exception of maybe a uh, Savage Dragon <laughs> that just doesn't work for me. Um, I'm a big, I think of all the comic books, uh, companies, I think I probably have more image than I have same. anything else. Cause I, yeah. same, <clears throat> same. Yeah. <clears throat> Most of the uh, books I collect are image. Yeah. Uh, other than that, a lot of low numbers. We have, yeah, Moon Man number one, Eden Ruled number four, Siphon number three. Um, and then coming out, I think next month, I will just get hyped for it. Spawn number 350. <laughs> uh, according to the ultimate salesman himself, McFarland, he says that's a good jumping in point. Oh, really? And huh, I've read the first hundred issues, so let's see if that's true. Oh, you'll have to you'll have to report back to it us. Will, a couple that I'm good. excited for coming out this week. Uh, Drive Like Hell number four comes out this week. Yeah, 
Local Man that. number nine. Yep. I've been really digging. Uh, Drive Like Hell Man is a series. dark horse, right? Huh? Drive Like Hell is a dark horse book, right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. There's just a lot of great stuff coming out. If you uh, if you like uh, fairy tale type stuff and fun stuff with that, you should check out Zenscope. Uh, that's a comic book company. They put oh, out a lot a, of great stuff. Yeah, they do the grim fairy tales and the characters from that. They yeah. actually have a new number one coming out this week. Um, uh, Holmes and Houdini. So, it, yeah. Oh, that sounds really cool. Actually. I will say that is it is for mature readers. Just I want to throw that out there. Yeah. Um, you know, or more mature, I should yeah. say. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, if you're if you're into that kind of stuff, definitely check those out. Uh, I could talk all day. If you're a Disney fan, I will say There's this. There's a lot of thing. Disney from Dynamite. Yeah. Yes. Dynamite has been putting out a lot of Disney. Yeah. Uh, this is week, weird. You've got another Lilo and Stitch, number one. L yeah. And I know people love Lilo and Stitch. L Lilo and Stitch? Coming to comic books this week. Yeah. You can go yeah. pick that up. They also did... Um, They've been doing Darkwing Duck. They mm -hmm. just put out Justice Ducks. I picked yep. that up. I haven't got to read it. There's Negaduck. Um, yep. Cordell. Oh, I can't even talk. Corella Deville. Yeah. That comes out. That comes out uh, the week after next. Yeah, but I think yeah. it's already going out. Yeah. Like it's not a number one. It's already a series out. So yeah, I think you yeah, could probably go great, find yeah. the first few issues of it. Yeah. So. A lot but. of really cool picks. I, honestly, you can't go wrong. Like no, you really can't. No. I mean, yeah. there's so much stuff. If you love, if you're a big cartoon person, if you like Rick and Morty, Rick and Morty's got a new uh, Only got Press the Maximum yeah. Crescendo is coming out this yep. week. So here's yeah. the thing: if you don't like Rick and Morty, I read the Rick and Morty Dungeons and Dragons crossover, and Dungeons and Dragons is always hit and miss with comics for me. Just for me, I thought it was fun. That book is amazing, right? That book is great. Did uh, you, what by chance, did you read Bill and Ted Roll the Dice? What? So there's a Bill and Ted what? series. It's a, a mini series. Bill and Ted roll the die, and it's kind of the yeah. It's a, yeah. A, it's basically a D and D Bill and Ted crossover. It was pretty good. I I love it because also what I like about that book is they they put into the flaws and like Rick can lose. Rick has uh, characters have agency and they have flaws. And D&D, mm -hmm. &D, sometimes when it's a bad, not, not a bad D&D &D book, when it's a book that's not for me, it just feels like a bunch of uh, characters going through a module that you can do at home and not <laughs> character driven. Yep. Whereas the Rick and Morty books are the books I like for the D&D. &D, it's very character driven. And it, man, those Rick and Morty books are surprisingly very, very good. So go get it. Even if you hate Rick and Morty, it might surprise you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. we need to start wrapping up before we do, we do though. We want to talk about, you know, we, we, first of all, thank you for the people that have yeah. been already following our social media accounts. You can thank follow you. us pretty much on all social media platforms, panel picks pod. Uh, we're on, uh, we're on threads, Instagram, Facebook, blue sky. Uh, you can follow us on all those, but we've got a lot of support already from yeah. a lot of independent creators that you don't hear us talking about right now because they're so independent. They're, so they're awesome. not even in the preview. Like these are comics you can't necessarily get at every comic book store. They don't have major distribution. So we want to highlight some of these people exactly. because we want, we want people to discover these great comics because there are some fantastic creators out there. So I want to jump in and I want to say an almost funny story about how this happened. One, every, especially on Blue Sky, all of you, you guys are all fantastic. I, I love all of you guys. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, also the people on threads have been just like tagging us and supporting us and emailing yeah, us. Yeah, it's been amazing. I'm like, yeah. fantastic. like, love all of you. But on Blue Sky, I ended up seeing a lot of notifications very quickly. And I was like, whoa, what, what's going on? And I realized I did a typo. And one of the beautiful, most beautiful typos I've ever had. <laughs> happy it's accident. Happy accident. It's like one of those like weird like movie moments. Like, oh no, they messed up. And then like you hear ping, 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 ping. And people loved it. Because I meant to write a sentence. And it was originally, what is your favorite independent comic? And I accidentally wrote, what is your independent comic? <laughs> and because of that, you all poured in and showed support. And then told other people to comment. And I've been... 
I'm trying to read all your stuff. I'm trying. Some of you have 600 page books and I, I, God bless you. And some of you have <laughs> books that have been doing it for 11 years. Bless you. I'm trying. Lord knows I'm trying. And if you want to suggest your books, we will, we will recommend them. The only rules we have is no hateful, nothing hateful. And if you have to ask if it is, you, it is. And nothing AI. Like yes, real comics written right. by real people. Yes. Let's go. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And I, I just want to throw in, you can either tag us on social media, hashtag indie picks, or yeah. you can email us directly, panelpickspodcast at gmail.com. Yeah. So and if, if you, you have, have a book that you think we might like and you'd like featured on an upcoming episode, and we can't guarantee that we're going to get all of them, and we can't guarantee that we're going to be able to mention them all. Yeah. Uh, we only have so much time, but we're going to yeah. try to highlight as many indie creators as we can in their yeah. books and, and, and hopefully help people discover what you're doing. So we're going to uh, make panel picks a, podcast at gmail.com. We're going to make this a once a month like list. Uh, and I have them here. Uh, here, let me pull up my notes here. You guys are all fantastic and all beautiful. Thank you all so much. Um, let me see here. It is do 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 do. Okay, great. Uh, it is so. First episode problems. It's just me yeah. finding everything. It's him trying to get organized. He's got this yeah. big list that he wants to feature, but he can't find it. Mm, how convenient. In my defense. Okay, great. Perfect. Okay, so for starters, uh, here's the ones I'm personally uh, subscribed to on uh, web uh, webtoons which is a great application for self-published work. Uh, and I have some personal ones that are outside of all of this. Um, Moonlight Apparition uh, is a really fun, uh, like part of the Magical Girl uh, collection. Um, it's really cool. I recommend it. That is by uh, Dark Halo 4321. We have Necro, uh, Necro, Necro Knights Guardians of the... Uh, uh, Life, Death, and Evening uh, by Brian Brennan. Uh, fair warning, that is for mature audiences. <laughs> uh, and if I got the name... Put those correct, disclaimers out. <laughs> yeah, I gotta put that disclaimer out. And if I got the name incorrect, I do apologize. It, it, it cut off. But Necronites by Brian Brennan. All of this is being retweeted on Blue Sky, by the way. So follow us there if you want to see more about it in the direct links and where to support mm -hmm. them. Uh, Side Quested by Ali Presser. Um, I've been reading that already. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. Um, Puffer and Clarissa by James L. Nelson. Uh, the Unlucky Ones and The Edge of Nowhere by Nikki Rodriguez. Um, and let's see, we also have J Jay Pollock, who has two amazing queer books. Uh, we have Dead City, which is post-apocalyptic, and Gender Slices. Uh, the one that is 600 pages, uh, go support them. Kings of Sorts by uh, Cra uh, Crab BNG at Blue Sky. And we have, uh, finally, we have Black, well, we have a couple more. Black Sunshine by Jamie Simone. Uh, and by Gearpunk. Gearpunk, thank you for also retweeting us and asking other people to tell us. That was fantastic. Thank you. Um, Fractured Comic. Uh, they have, they have uh, yeah, Fractured Earth by Gearpunk at bluesky.com. Uh, and then finally, one person was a little uh, hesitant to suggest this, and I'm going to tell them that you actually are in a great knowledge of history here. Um, Sarah uh, Elkins has Book of COL, and they were nervous because it's a, it is a web novel or a web novel with illustrations. And one of the very first graphic novels was Contract with God which was a lot more free form and had, didn't have panels per se. And mm -hmm. it was more of a poetry book, more of a prose with some pictures on it. Oh, okay. So, Interesting. Fantastic work. All of you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, and then I, yeah. we, we do have one more. We haven't got the chance yes. to read it yet, but it was sent to us via threads yes. from Frankie B Cambria comics. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm terrible at words. It's, Kaiju versus Kaiju. Cowboys. Kaiju. That's how you say that. Kaiju and Cowboys is what it's called. Yes. Cow yes. Um, I looked at the some of the artwork on it. 
beautiful and it, it looks uh, amazing uh yeah. so yeah if you want to find out more about you know that you can you know if you want to find out about that particular comic we haven't got a chance to like yeah. dive into it yet uh but it is on the agenda yes. go to cambrian comics.com and uh yeah shout out to frankie b for reaching out yep. on uh threads and threads, uh, yeah. sharing your sharing your work with us and also bent box comics yes i saw uh, yes you guys also have emailed us thank you um you have a uh a book called artificial which is uh against ai and it's a cool sci-fi adventure i i am reading it i uh i need to actually read it i'm not it. Because he hasn't sent me any of this. No, I have uh, not he's sent him terrible that one at yet. social media. I am so terrible. He's good I'm at running... getting you guys engaged, but he's not good at sharing. I'm with running me. 10 <laughs> different accounts. If you count my own comedy stuff as well, I'm running 10 accounts. I'm tired and haggard. But uh, as oh. soon as he shares it with me, I'll try to yeah. read it too. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I'll forward that to you literally right now. Um, this is our longest episode. Guys, we want to thank you on this weird journey. Um, it's only going to get better from here. And we want to thank you so much for everything. Please, if you have questions about comic books or a book you want to recommend to us, uh, or just shoot tell that us email. if you like it, shoot that, shoot that email. We will answer shoot, questions. Yeah, shoot that um, email. Or t mention us on social media. Yeah. You know, follow yep. us, Panel Pick Pods. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And I will say, yeah, you know, if you, we appreciate you tuning in. If you're, if you listen to this episode and we uh, appreciate your support, if you really want to help us, this is the best way you're going to help us right now. We're a new podcast. Yep. Help get us out there. If you have other friends that you think would enjoy uh, a podcast about comic books and all things pop culture and nerdy, please share this podcast with them. Just, yeah share it retweet it do all the things you're already doing uh, especially with this episode uh, yeah i know a lot of times in in the creator space like this people are like how can i contribute financially and things like that right now we don't care about that we're not setting up anything we're not trying to get money no. that's why there's you've heard ads in here we worry about that there if you really want to support us subscribe and leave us a five star review and, mm -hmm. and say some nice words about us because we're yeah. so new. That's going to help push us up in the algorithms and yeah. in the in the charts of all the different podcast platforms. And then that's yeah. going to help us be discovered by people just like you. Because we're yeah. starting ground zero, but we're trying to build something beautiful and a great community. So And a, and sure. a retweet is free. Yep. A retweet right. Absolutely. Free. That's right. It's yep. free. A free. like, a comment. All it takes is a little bit of time. Yep. So, all, and all it takes. That's all it takes? All right. Well, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Panel Picks Podcast. Thank you so much. Oh, Thank you, uh, Jocelyn Rodriguez, for our amazing art. Jocelyn Rodriguez Parr for our amazing artwork and in, uh, background. So thank you for that. And thank you all of you for listening tonight. Good night. All right. We'll see you next week with an all-new episode of Panel Picks, Ooh. the podcast. This has been a Tape Deck Media production. Thank you for listening.